Hey Hollywood, pay your fucking creatives. Ladies and gentlemen, and variations thereupon, this is Modern Escape Business. Welcome everyone to another week of Modern Escapism, the podcast that just like Hollywood aren't being compensated nearly enough for their output. My name is Stig and I'm back after another week. After missing last week, I'm jumping into the hot seat as your special guest host this week because this next man is ill. He still doesn't feel 100% and has asked me to help out. But he's here for you anyway. But unlike those baseless claims he made against myself and Gadget, he actually did have a dribbly bum. It's oodles. <laughs> I genuinely had a... Mate, it was brown water. (laughs) (laughs) Horrendous. Calm as a bitch. It surely is. Next up, you've already heard him. He's a man who would have had Hollywood sorted out in no time. If only Hollywood was a horse. Left, right, dynamite. It's Gadget. Uh, Punching all over the place. Just punch. So much punching. (laughs) And finally, the man who Tom Cruise based his whole life on barring his hairline, who stares down danger in the face every week with those news intros. It's Biggie. (laughs) Thank you, I think. Ah, Candy is not with us tonight because her bed has arrived and she's instantly become (laughs) a Twitch gaming sensation and sacked us off. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't want to laugh that much. (laughs) I've seen photos, guys. Listener, I've seen photos that you do not want to see. <laughs> that Todd Howard pillow is going to have more candy in its face than if you tripped <laughs> off the hand and pick a mix. <laughs> <laughs> the best gift she ever received, that. It is. Done in. I, did, uh, I did suggest that, well, I've bet a fiver that she's going to fall out the bed tonight because she spent oh, 10 years <laughs> sleeping on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone, other than Oodles, who's clearly dying? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Little peek behind the curtain, we're recording this a night later because everyone was useless yesterday. <laughs> I was I were worse than uh, today, not everyone. I I worse. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was so ready you, to do Biggie you could have done your own episode. Yeah, it could have been just you Biggie. You could have just had an hour and a half of Biggie, which I'm sure everyone would have been completely happy with, just Biggie talking to the void for an hour and a half. <laughs> I mean, Candy was, Candy was fine yesterday. You could have had an hour and a half of like Biggie and pod. Candy together. Yeah. Not them two together on their own. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard Scott Sheep. You've heard what happens oh. when it's just them two. Oh, they need no adult way. supervision. Yeah. Oh, man, I had my exam today, which I think went all right, but we'll see. Well done. Good lad. What, um, I'm more... Good lad. What, what um, riveting tome did you have to revise this time? <laughs> this one is uh, Team Dynamics and Change. What really annoyed me about this, this book is 173 it, pages long, right? Yeah. Wow. Covers so many different subjects. The exam probably covered about 20% of what I've learned, about 80% of the stuff that I've sat there and learned, mm-hmm. and all these mm-hmm. theories, all these names, everything. Wasn't even in it. Just pot luck. <laughs> yeah, most most professional wow. exams I've ever done over the years for like my various accreditations have always been like that. You're like sit and do like three months of learning and loads of online courses or classroom courses and the test is like 10% of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, ah, sigh. Got another one on Friday and that's me done for the summer. You'll smash it, mate. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to announce my, uh, my uh, what I'd like, for the YouTube viewers, my, what I entitled my Sinead O'Connor era. I've <laughs> cut all my hair off. <laughs> yeah. Noth- nothing compares to me. And I'm enjoying it. You're I'm right. Nothing does quite out. compare to you. You're 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 a, you're a law unto yourself. <laughs> I, I'm enjoying getting out of the bath and shaking my head dry. <laughs> <laughs> you almost you almost look like me and Gadget now. <laughs> you're just fucking wandering around the house like a shaggy dog, just shaking the water off. You. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, told, she told me over day. She went, "You still need to dry your hair with a towel." I went, "No, <laughs> no." <laughs> but yeah, I that's, now that's have me. the longest hair with the bo- oh, the boys. Anyway, you do. You do, mate. But mine will grow back in about three weeks and it'll be longer than yours. Probably. <laughs> I'm still comforted right. by having the longest beard. Mm. If I if I grew if I grew mine out, I'd I challenge. 
No, you I wouldn't. Just, I, I just don't like would it. You? <laughs> I just don't vote, man. Yeah, I just don't would like her at all. I'm just not. I'm just not a beard man. That's all. It's a shortest my beard. Would you do it for charity? Yeah, really fun. This is this is the shortest my beard's been in years, and it's like fucking ten times longer than Stig's stubble. <laughs> should, we, should, should, should we do a charity <laughs> thing this year and get Stig to do no shave November? Yeah. No, because oh. nothing will happen. You used to do a full year. <laughs> just want to see what happens after. Have to draw I, on with did, a I did all of lockdown, <laughs> and it was. Horrendous. <laughs> How about stick? Me and you, we go completely chin bald and we'll just see who gets to a beard first. Well, you yeah, yeah, on, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, on. Let's go back is... to that. The winner becomes ultimate I want to go back male. to that because we, we, we created this podcast during lockdown. You did not have a beard. Oh, I shaved it before that. <laughs> no, did you now? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I let it grow for about two months and I got some, I've got a picture of me with a moustache. Um... <laughs> Two months gadget, a mustache. <laughs> it's, but it's I like a mustache in a day. <laughs> I see. I see. You just Proper need to skip your, skip your lunch time in three o'clock yeah, shifts, and you have a mustache. Just think, You'll get there, much, baby. You'll just get think there. how much I save on save on the uh, shaving Loads. stuff. Loads. I Fucking barely have to use it. Yeah, man. Anyway, right, I envy you. Sod this chat. We need some biggies breaking news, and there's lots this week. Give it to us. You may already know, but he doesn't, because it's time for Biggie's Breaking News. Here's a little news I spoke. You might want to listen for a joke. Don't worry. (laughs) It's Biggie. (laughs) In every pod, we have some updates. But don't worry about the patron rates. Don't worry. It's Biggie. Don't worry, it's Biggie. Okay, moving. Thank you. Don't worry. I, I can't hear my notes today. I can only the company, Joe. Not today. Yes, moving swiftly on. Uh, here we go. Microsoft wins FTC fight to buy Activision Blizzard. Yay! Sick. It's done. Has it? A California it judge. Sort of. A California, a California judge is allowing Microsoft to close its acquisition of Activision Blizzard after five days of gruelling testimony. Microsoft still faces an ongoing antitrust case by the Federal Trade Commission, but Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley has listened to arguments from both the FTC and Microsoft and has decided to deny the regulator's request for a preliminary injunction. As this, this was announced... <laughs> Sony Group Corporation, their shares fell as much as 2.7%. What? Yeah. May as well die. And then, ironically, it? over. Almost as soon as this was announced, Microsoft just signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation following the uh, acquisition. So there you go. Well, a lot it's of people keep saying it's not about Call of Duty. I mean, it clearly fucking is, isn't it? Mm. That's all they care about. It clearly is. I mean, Oodles, you're sorting it. You can have your annual Call of Duty on your PlayStation now. I'm so happy. You've played more of Call of Duty than I have in the last 10 years. I love that. I, I genuinely do like the Call of Duty campaigns. I think they're good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I genuinely, think, I genuinely and now, think they're good. And now I can get it on Game Pass in 2025. Just smash a campaign and delete it. So smash bit. a campaign, yeah. yeah I don't perfect. have to, yeah, I don't yeah, have to yeah, spend... Yeah. yeah, I don't have to pay full whack just for a campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only if it's Makes good, sense. though. Also get the Spyro reboot. Even the bad Call of Duty <laughs> campaigns are better than fucking kills on me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Wow. Come on. Play the game, Flower. Next. <laughs> uh, mate, uh, do, do I have to do next? Because you're not obviously no, feeling Stig great, so I'll have to do it to myself. It. I was about oh, okay, to, but, you know. Next. Go on. No. <laughs> <laughs> no oh, can we talk about Activision then, shall we? <laughs> A major announcement. I think his name is it Larry Herb. Is that actually how you pronounce his surname? Also no known idea. as Major Nelson. After 20 incredible years, he announced, I have decided to take a step back and work on the next chapter of my career. As I take a moment and think about all that we've done together, I want to thank the millions of gamers around the world who have included me as part of their lives. Also, thanks to the Xbox team members for trusting me to have a great direct dialogue with our customers. The future is bright for Xbox, and as a gamer, I am excited to see the evolution. Thanks, and I'll see you online. Who's that again? Major Nelson. Major Nelson. 
Oh, Major Nelson. Oh, fucking hell. I didn't know you're on about. I'm like, who the fuck's this? No, I didn't know him by Major Nelson. Yeah, same. He's, he was quite uh, iconic in the uh, Xbox 360 era. I like him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I gives me free shit every Friday as well, but I know, he never picks me. <laughs> Biggie's got loads. Biggie's got loads of codes. He's just not got an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does as well. He's just got he all, I bet he's got a pile. Games. I bet he's got a pile of Xbox games that he's won, like I, actual physical I games. I haven't. No. Fuck off, you bullshit. Liar. And also, he's probably got a lot of physical, a lot of Xbox games. He's, he's asked Kurt for. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> yeah, percent. Nope. Uh, he's like, yeah, Kurt, please. And Kurt, Kurt's like, I want to go to Xbox. He's like, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> to see the X, bitch. <laughs> Kind of end of an era for uh, Major Nelson, it, but, but you know, fine. People move on. The, the He's not Reggie in, though, in my eyes. He's yeah, not yeah. as big as Reggie was. Yeah, no, he isn't. Next, accused GTA Six leaker deemed unfit to stand trial by psychiatrists. He faces twelve charges for various computing new news after a catastrophic leaks or dozens of work in progress GTA Six videos and screenshots that emerged online. The accused perpetrator, 18-year-old Orion Curtage, I think his name is, has been deemed unfit to stand trial following assessment. As a result, uh, Reuters reports that a jury will now need to determine whether he's committed the acts as opposed to delivering a more traditional guilty or not guilty verdict. And I, I thought, OK, fair enough. And then I read a bit more into this, and it now says that Curtage is in trouble for much more than holding Rockstar to ransom. He's also accused right. of hacking... <laughs> Taxi app Uber, computer chip manufacturing video, and financial tech firm Revolut, as well as blackmailing mobile networks, BT and EE. Oh no, he's not God. fit at all. Yeah, I think, okay, I, fair think enough. I, I think he might. What? I think he might be going to jail. I think he might just be going to jail. I can't believe wow. that's his defence, seriously. <laughs> well, it's not his defence, it's just, it's just clearly just managed to wrangle it so that he doesn't have to actually stand in the trial. What a dingbat. Oh, what, well, a ding- what a yeah. smart, smart dingbat. Yeah. Possibly someone who should not be to- allowed near a computer ever again. I'd love to hack something. Mm. Oh, He'd be like that ha- guy from Hackers, won't he? That, what's his name? Hack the planet. Yeah, what's his name? Johnny Lee Johnny Miller. Johnny Miller. Yeah, that's him. That's him. <laughs> that's him, that's him in real planet. life. Yeah. Hack the planet. <laughs> oh, God. Imagine being able to hack. I bet Gadget knows how to hack. I do. It's incredibly boring. Like yeah, a, my, oh. my friend once showed me how... Is that like bashing keyboards? And no, no, it, no, you just put your point... Your point just, it, a lot of like most hacks are either like uh, getting someone's details by social engineering... Or, or knowing the password. Or um, using like a script to just like attack and attack some, uh, something until it like until you break through. Like it's not, it's not like fucking swordfish where you've got 10,000 oh, screens around you and, and Halle Berry getting her tits out around you. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. just hacking. That's what I, I want. Yeah, oh, in, like, <laughs> hacker, in hackers out there, they're like floating around the actual like, yeah. cyberspace yeah. out there, <laughs> clicking on stuff. Yeah, it's not that. It's a lot of black no. screens with white text on I them. Thought it'd be like <laughs> reboot. Remember reboot? The fucking reboot, man. <laughs> hey, fucking less. Stop, stop bad mouthing reboot. My, my friend once like... showed me it, and it was literally just him. Like he says, I'm not. He wouldn't not doing anything like bad. It's just, I just wanted to do oh, it yeah. and prove it. He went, look, I'm sh- in some guy's computer. Those, that's his files. That was it. Like, he's we... been in my computer too many times, to be honest. <laughs> Seen things. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Don't click on that file. Too late. <laughs> yeah, the file named Biggie. <laughs> Secret, <laughs> yeah. Secret Biggie, Biggie file. You got to watch yourself Never. on these podcast meetups, mate. Next. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh... Talking about trouble, the South Korean Game Rating Board, also known as the Game Rated Administration Committee, has been found guilty of embezzlement after an audit by the South Korean government. According to Niche Gamer, based on a report by the South Korean outlet Insight Korea, Grack has come into the sites of the anti-corruption authorities due to reports made by upset players of Blue Archive, a mobile game with gacha mechanics developed by Nexon Games. The age rating had recently been raised from 15 to 18, and um, some of the content was estimated to be too graphic. The players disagreed with this change. Around 5,500 of them launched a petition. And then following this, it ended up being an investigation. It turned out they've been embezzling $46,000 in funds, allegedly funneling the money into mining cryptocurrency. No way. There you go. All right, the buggers, aren't there? Little buggers. <laughs> 
It's a lot of little bezzling going on over in Far East, isn't there? That's all. The, that's what they love. They love a bit of embezzlement. I mean, I mean, to be fair, Eugene Acker's pushing that to, to a certain level. It's not. He's a king. He's the top end of it. Like he embezzled millions. <laughs> They've just done forty six grand. It's a bit different. Yeah. Fuck now it. the crypto Keep it coming. kings. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Thanks. Double the government. Something close to Stiggy's heart. A shocking study reveals eighty seven percent of classic games are critically endangered. A new study by the Video Game History Foundation has revealed the shocking state of video game preservation. A study conducted in partnership with Software Preservation Network has determined that a staggering 87% of classic video games released in the United States are endangered. According to the report, just 13% of video games history is currently represented in the marketplace. This means nearly 9 in 10 classic games are only accessible via original hardware, visiting a video game library or resorting to piracy. This is why you need physical media. Yes. And why I keep saying it over and over again, even now, even with modern games, because 10, 15 years down the line, if these games are just put out on servers, what's to stop them just pulling them and getting rid of them? Like Disney did with all those like films and TV shows recently. You can't access yeah, can't them anymore. Wa- I can't watch Song of the South anywhere. Not that, but <laughs> <laughs> like it might have failed and only been a one season thing, but that Willow got pulled and literally it was made watched and then disney just got rid of it yeah like, it's gone on it if if you do that start doing that with games then you know a lot of people like to play retro games and go back and play them don't they yeah in many many years time what we're playing now people might want to go back and play and they can't if it's there's no physical media version of it yeah so it's, bollocks, isn't it? it's, it's not a fair. slippery slope into losing a culture i think yeah Mm. Mm. They need to do mm. something. Why do they don't do they have like a film library in, in America for stuff as well? Why don't they do a game one? I think there's there was a place I'm sure I mentioned it before. There was a museum, like an or official one, like for, together. for the whole world. Yeah, just I think so. Pull those masters in and and just get it fucking get it in a museum, man. Because I think the rights holders want to want to stop other people yeah. making money from it or don't want to give things away for free. Well, you know, it's worse for that Nintendo. Yeah, they they, they will they will hold like the master copy of a game and then re-release it ten years later as a deluxe edition, no changes. Like, they, like, they do like to do that. Yeah, for fifty pounds. Oh, yeah, look, I mean, I mean, look, look what they did or rather didn't do with the Mario All Stars edition. Didn't do any exactly. fucking changes to it. No, no. just released it. Here's fifty pounds for these yep. games. I mean, Galaxy's Boom. amazing. Yeah, but fifty quid. No. Next. <laughs> the Last of Us composer, Gustavo Santalala, I think his name is. Uh, apologies if I got that wrong. Has suggested that a new Most version of Part 2 <laughs> is on the horizon. In an interview with Spanish site Blender, the composer alluded to an updated edition of Part 2, in which players will be able to interact with his character in Jackson. In the new editions, you can make me play certain themes, he said of his banjo playing cameo in the game. However, the composer stopped short revealing any more details, saying, I can't tell you anything else. He basically, so guess... already has done. he basically already has done there that he's told us it's going to be a remaster. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked it. But I guess in, in reality, I guess he might be suggesting maybe a native PlayStation 5 version or perhaps I've seen the I've seen the, the other leaks since then where it's like 120 frames per second mode. There's um this they've added deleted scenes, but but you, they're not in the game. You have to watch them separately. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a game. I mean, We're having got... deleted scenes, I think, in a game. I mean, if they're going to port it to the PC, have they, have they finished the first one on PC yet? What the fuck? I just... Yeah. Um, I mean, it could say, like, what's the point? Because it's there, PS4, you could play that on the PS5, but... Yeah, in 60. Like, the difference between The Last of Us and The Last of Us Remastered, that was... You, you can tell the difference between the PS3 and PS4 version, so... Substantial, I'm yeah. guessing this is probably... I don't know because the PS4 is a big leap on it, whereas the PS5 think, isn't. So no. I think I, I'd be I'd be a bit miffed with it if they um, did it as like a charge seventy full do- whack. if they charge a full whack and do a seventy dollar release. If mm. because because the part two came out just before the PS5 dropped. I mean, it's literally a few months before. Um, Three much, years now, but yeah, much, much like the actually the original last was to PS3 to PS4. Um, it did, but if they do like a ten quid upgrade. Fine, I'm good with that because what, I like Death Stranding. Yeah, like Death Stranded. Like 
because I still have the discs for it. I'm, I'm going to play it at some point. But you know, if, mm-hmm. if they can say, "Oh, ten out and upgrade a PS5 version," great, I'll fucking do that. I don't want to pay sure, seventy yeah. quid to play it. You know, no, 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 no. no. But this is what they're doing in it until we get whatever Naughty Dog doing next. Got no games, have we? Got Another no remastered on version of Part One. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they've not. <laughs> they said they weren't going to work on something new, aren't they? But they've not released any well, there's, details of really there's, of. They've still got the Last of Us multiplayer that they said they would do, which seems to have spun guess. off into its own thing. And people are going to just not be interested in that by the time that comes out. That's been so long now. It was deeply yeah, average. Factions were Faction... No, no, no. Factions were good, but it didn't have a long as an add-on. I'm, I'm convinced. Not as a full game. I'm convinced that they're working on the Last of Us three, and they're not. They're saying, oh, if we find a story, we'll do it. But pre- I'm pretending. Yeah. I'm convinced they've got yeah. a team working on that. So it's ready for... By the time this TV series finishes, catches up with the game, that comes out. Then we film the next series of the TV show and it all... Mm. We don't end up with a Game of Thrones situation, basically, where yeah. they just have to make something up. That's what I'm going with. I'm convinced they've... They know okay. They, yeah. 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 Yep. Next. Over to the world of film and TV. As Stig already alluded to, the Screen Actors Guild strike. Actors have joined the writers on the Hollywood picket lines, including Jason Sudeikis, Susan Sarandon, and thousands of other actors have joined screenwriters for Hollywood's biggest strike in more than six decades. Actors will not appear in films or even promote movies during the stoppage. Great. Excellent. Major films in production including the Avatar and Gladiator sequels, may be affected by the shutdown. No, oh, no. I mean, it would be so um, sad if Avatar and Gladiator sequels <laughs> ended up being cancelled. Oh, no. <laughs> because they lost the budget. Deadpool 3, though, aren't they? Oh, see, yeah. that's, that's not good news. Like, Hugh Jackman spent all that time probably getting back into shape, and I'm like, Hugh, we need you to carry on just staying in shape for the next... God knows how long. Body. Whatever. Indefinite period. <laughs> Damaging yeah. your 50-plus-year-old body. <laughs> yeah, just keep... Keep working out. Keep eating all that yeah. chicken. This might kill you. <laughs> yeah. If you like figures, about 160,000 performers stopped work at midnight um, of the That's strike. Why I didn't, I didn't the, want to do the podcast yesterday. Solidarity. <laughs> joining the 11,500 members of the Writers Guild of America. You know, you, you, you know, you, know then, oodles, oodles, you can't say that because you'll go to prison for that because we're, we're not allowed to do solidarity strikes in this country thanks to Mrs. Thatcher. Oh. <sighs> The studios and streamers have reportedly have no intention of negotiating with the writers' skills for several more months. The end game is apparently to allow things to drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their houses, a studio executive told Deadline. That's nice. Yeah, that was has not gone down well. That I that is pretty much I think the reason why the actors decided to jump in. Yeah. Yep. They heard that and they're just like, "Are you fucking for real?" And like, right, yeah, we're exactly. jumping. In. Have you seen Ron Perlman's response have, to that? Yeah. <laughs> he went yeah. full Sons of Anarchy with that. Yes, one. he did. <laughs> he was not happy with that. <laughs> He's like, everyone and knows who it is that said it. Like, <laughs> and, and from today's announcement, SAG after National Executive Director Duncan Crabtree Island, wow, that's a name, passionately went into more details about what Hollywood Studios offered in regards to the AI issue. In that groundbreaking AI proposal, they proposed that our background performers should be able to be scanned, get paid for one day's pay, and the company should own that scan, their image, their likeness, and for people to use it for the rest of uh, eternity in any project they want with no consent and no compensation. Nope. Fuck no way. right yeah, off with that. Fuck right off. No way. Do you know no what? Way. I was reading some stuff on Twitter as well there. Some like part time actors and, and like up, up. Up and comers, people trying to get the you know leg into the business and that. But like we've worked on shows where we were scanned and we had no idea why. Hmm. And now they're like, a lot of them are just like we're worried that this is why. Like, and now they're just going to own Samuel our Jackson uh, just referred us in the to back that for it. working on Marvel. Yeah. Did you um on the AI bit? Did you see that? Oh, I tried to. I was going to tag it tag it into you on TikTok. Someone did a five minute podcast between two AIs. It's fucking atrocious. But they were like, this is the future of podcasts. I'm like, if you, touch, if you touch my radio, walk off. And right now, <laughs> AI is crap because it can only Shy. use what has come before. It What's, can't what exists. It can't think of anything new. It has to take what has already happened and existed and try and reformat it into something new. Simon Pegg was on about it saying it just 
AI does not have an, an emotion. It doesn't have no. experiences. It doesn't have breakup experiences. It doesn't have grief and trauma that, that writers and creators put into their work. It can't do that. You've seen those fucking... Um, look at the credits for... What's it? Uh, Secret Invasion. They look shit. Created by AI. Are they? There's no, there's, yeah. there's no, there's no love yeah. to it. No. You see, I no, mean, you, there's some I of the people sent me on artists, TikTok. Like, you oh, know, God, you know, <laughs> absolute nightmare fuels where people just put like, <laughs> yeah, they put like a, a scenario in, uh, like, oh, top God. Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> eating pencils, and it's fucking yeah. nightmare fuel. He's like, these are the yeah. greatest pencils in the world. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> AI just isn't yeah. that good, but they don't it, know. The problem is them wanting to push that concept and that technology. Going, Here's Richard Hammond. He's a dick. He's a dick. He's yeah. a dick. He's a dick. <laughs> yeah, they're funny, but I mean, yeah. the, 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 I think the AI proposal that they're talking about, obviously, it's it's disgusting, but it's the whole point of using AI image generation to put extras in the background and stuff turn like that, so they don't have now, to hire, turn it hire all them. Off. Um, turn it off. Which I don't, I don't like. I, what I do like though is just seeing on on Twitter and TikTok and threads and whatever, like all the people who are supporting it and all the actors who are coming, like. I do like that the big actors, you know, the multi-millionaire actors are coming out to support it as well. It's not a fuck you got mine situation. They're all And they're involved. losing a lot of money because they are earning a lot of money. Yeah. Well, it, mm-hmm. it, 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 yeah, but it's also like, you know, like, like Matt Damon is supporting, he, he's, he's, he's put together a fund for, um, yeah. jobbing actors to pay them who, yeah, to, yeah. To, to help keep them paid during this, you know? So it's like, yeah. It it comes back to it, and it, it's 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 good that they're doing that. And I think ultimately the actors will win because now the actors and the writers are off. They're, that hasn't happened since the sixties, I think. The, We've all been content. there. It's very hard to act. It is very hard to fucking act. Even a background actor, it's very hard to fucking act. I yeah. did. Um, I think I read this uh, interview with Brian Cox, and he said that this could go on for almost a year. You know, if they stand their ground and just say that we're not budging until this is resolved, this could put production on. Have so you seen that? Things. Have you seen that prediction? That stat that they're saying something like, "If this carries on, there'll be a full week or two, or something like that, without a single release on anything, even digital yeah. stuff." And it'll be the first time since the mediums existed that there won't be a new release. I think it'll be like January or something like that. Good, I can finally yeah, catch January, up. Yeah, January, January. Can I said. finally it's catch insane. up on my seven hundred film watch list? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but yeah. when you think about that's insane. It's yeah. good though since because that ta- since that time you first went to the cinema, Biggie, with that train, now <laughs> it there's I, always I did been a release. Yeah, but what it means as well is if they if they drag it out and drag out these studios and we're unwilling to budge, if they've got nothing to put on their programs, people are just going to be like, well, unsubscribe. Yeah, people are gonna like they're not gonna go to the cinema. They're, they're gonna lose trust in it, and they're just gonna be like, "Well, you're you not putting anything out." Disney already losing money. Like um, Indiana Jones is set to lose a lot of money. Yeah, you Warner, know, still... Warner Brothers have taken an absolute bath on the Flash. Yeah, yeah fuck that though. <laughs> okay. yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but still, the but Flash it's... is is going to end its theatrical run with less money than Green Lantern did. Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, they're losing oh, money I... with. It. And <sighs> that's fucked up. They need to come to a compromise, otherwise they're going to get to a point where they have no content, and customers will go, "Well, fine, I'll just do something else." What bothers me though about this is like people that consider themselves cinephiles on Twitter, on uh, threads, saying, "Oh, they're just being petty, being petty." I'm like, if it's a medium you love, support the people that are helping that yeah. medium exist. Yeah, even even if you are, and I don't think anyone listening to our show would be. Oh, they're just rich people like the actors trying to get more money. They're not doing it. For, they, they don't need the money. They're doing it in solidarity of yeah. the people yeah. who can't afford, to, like to just not get paid because they were there at one point. That yeah. was them at one point. They, they yeah, were some up of them and come, have to in, actors yeah. who didn't have a, a money. They have to live in these these cities that cost two thousand yeah. dollars a week rent, and they get paid two thousand dollars a month. <laughs> and it affects, that out. it affects their um, healthcare plans as well. It does, yeah. Oh, massively. Because massive. uh, America is just a toxic, hate-filled, uh, horrible yeah, place. <laughs> anyway, before we get into unions too much and bashing America, um, pay, pay your writers, pay your actors, and support it. We yes. will. We yeah, do. Man. So, yeah, next. Man. Well, ironically, uh, the, uh, the Last of Us uh, has been nominated for Best Writing at the Emmys. So, um, well, just in the sense that recognizing the Don't fact that we've got some fantastic 
shows of late, and The Last of Us got nominated for the best writing at the Emmys. Did you see that episode, um, episode three, far, was it? Mm, it was episode three. Well, yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm just wondering where the irony is. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, that's lost. I was going to get into it, but um, Craig Mazin has also off, confirmed <laughs> when it actually... <laughs> <laughs> when it gets going, um, he's confirmed that The Last of Us Part 2 will be split into two seasons for the HBO series. The show will not end with season two unless people don't watch it and it will get cancelled. People watch but, it. Yeah, yeah I'll watch season three it. is I love, planned I, as well. I loved it. I loved um, that first season. Yeah, there is no way you could do that game in one season. No way. No. In no. nine episodes. The game is basically two games in one anyway. Yeah, it's two. Like, if they follow the yeah. same, I, I hope they follow the same path. I do. I do because it's more effective that way. If they start yep. s- s- switch, yeah, switching between the them, it's not the same. Follow the same way that the game did it because yep. that worked. That got you. You and know, it got it got the internet angry. Yeah, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the show's gonna get internet angry, and then you're just gonna play the game. It's all in Fucking there. Fucking girls, yeah. girls can't punch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, they can. And yeah. keep talking like that and you'll get punched by one. I can't wait for it. It's going to be great. Um, I can't. Next. It's not the same when Noodles doesn't do it. Um, also nominated Sorry, was Andor. More on that later. Uh, one of their episodes, One Way Out, was also nominated at the enemy. Uh, great enemies. episode. <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> the enemy. The enemy. The enemy. <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> Although Bob Iger, um, who's not very popular at the moment, he also says they'll be reducing oh. spending and creation for the new MCU and Star Wars projects. I think he's got fuck all money left. <laughs> <laughs> Good if it means they actually focus on some... Uh, this, this, they've diluted it too much. Quality. Yeah. MCU. MCU particularly. Like Get they, rid of all this fucking multiverse nonsense and start again. Yeah, the multiverse stuff doesn't bother me. If, if you write it properly, like, look at Spider-Verse. You can do multiverse perfectly fine. I think the CW, True. I never watched it, but everyone seems to praise their multiverse stuff. The Arrowverse is good. Yeah, if you just write it good, it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some, um, of the, some of the uh, the Flash TV show, the earlier seasons, were fantastic. There just seems to be no synergy with the MCU at the moment. Like, no fucker has said, like, we're, all, we're about seven or eight films down now, and no one has mentioned the big celestial poking out of the fucking ocean. <laughs> like, we no... have, Stig. We've mentioned it <laughs> many, many times. times. Because, what the fuck? That's a pretty big event. Why is the world not losing its access? Why is it not? <laughs> it's too heavy. Yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy for that. I know I love the yeah. MCU, uh, but if they just focus on it and not just throw shitloads of TV and films out in a year, like, yeah, yeah happy with that. Well, Next. speaking of Marvel, Deadpool 3, as uh, alluded to earlier, uh, Hugh Jackman's yellow Wolverine suit was unveiled by Ryan Reynolds. By the way, it is. I don't That's like it. I know, I know you said it's only a, <laughs> only a costume, but I just they don't need to spoil it. <laughs> I'll get into this with one of my reviews later. Uh, but... they, should have, they should have been old school and made him have an orange suit. Orange and brown. But I just would have been more yeah. like... Yeah, it gets people talking about it on the internet for a day. But if you wait for that reveal for the trailer, you then get that. You're more excited to see oh it in the trailer. Then you start getting all those reaction videos of people losing their mind. That's bigger than just here's a po- here's a picture and throwing it on Twitter. Mm. In my opinion, who like, knows? who fucking knows nowadays, mate? You just don't know anymore. They've also said Ele- Electra's coming back for it, and I've seen other pictures which has a broken up 20th century fox logo in the background Uh oh so <laughs> on the empire podcast they were discussing the the potential of is this going to be like deadpool pulling the fox characters officially from the fox universe into the into disney i know what they're doing <laughs> i know what they're doing and i don't want to spoil it they're doing D- days of future pool aren't they that, that one of the runs that he did where Deadpool literally went into Days of Future Past, that arc in the comics, and just stole everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're doing. And they're, I've just clicked on, yeah, it's Days of Future Pool, that's what it's going to be. But they're pulling the Fox characters into yeah. the MCU. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Next. Well, this has made Stiggy happy. James Cameron has announced there's a new Alita Battle Angel movie in the works. Mm. Good. Good. You got your wish, Good. mate. I enjoyed the first one. Wasn't like That's amazing, really but I actually yeah, really enjoyed it. And it's had a little. I liked everyone. I liked everyone in it. 
yeah, I had a little teaser at the end that was mm-hmm. there was a mm-hmm. sequel coming. Good, good bit of anime cinema, isn't it? I just wish he was directing it and putting his effort yes. into that. Yeah, and just offer some high concept sci-fi. Yeah, it's it's very anime. It's very um, cinematic. It it looks weird in in places, but it's supposed to be. So yeah. it's not like it's not dropping the ball in any. It's it's a solid like. I think it's like a seven out of ten film, me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was it. enjoyable. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. Next. Be- better than uh, the Mortal Engines. Remember that one? <laughs> I said. I said next. <laughs> <laughs> I like this new thing. Um, Superman Legacy is mentioned last week. Some more casting has been announced. Nathan Fillion has been cast as Guy Gardner. Isabella no Merced with a proper, has been proper cast ball cut as well. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Bang into that. Love Guy Gardner. Isabella Merced or Merced has been cast as Hawk Girl and Eddie Kathegi has been cast as Mr. Terrific. I don't recognise oh, any Terrific. of these characters. Mr. I have no idea who they are. Oh, these are mega characters. Hawk oh, Girl's better than Hawkman. And Guy Gardner's the best Green Lantern, not Al Jordan, so you can all fuck off and suck and dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you guys don't know. Guy Gardner's incredible with his goofy hair. Um, Jim's going to say these aren't just there to set up future films. This isn't there to set up a hot girl film and a Mr. They're Terrific just film. They're just in the story to tell Superman's story and what he wants to do. So the, the part of the film. It's terrific. They're not I there can't for living... <laughs> extended DC stuff. Yeah. Oh, you'd love Mr. Terrific if we never heard of him. Get into that Wikipedia deep dive, mate. There's some fucking reveals on that guy. <laughs> Woo, he's terrific. I need to look into DC characters. I don't know many. Mm. I don't know much outside of like Justice League and Bat- Batman universe. Yeah. Oh, there's some fucking crazy cats. I'm telling you. Oof. Next. Nick Offerman and Holtz Mac- uh, McAllany. I think that's right. Have been cast in Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part Macaulay. Two. Oh, yeah. oh. Macalani, Macalani, Macalani. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, I was surprised by this because I actually assumed they'd done a, like a back-to-back filming for the uh, no. Mission Impossible, but obviously no. Because no. first one was like plagued by COVID, like they were on and off it for ages. So and and by Tom Cruise wanting to do mega stunts four times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> some of them stunts look insane. That I'm not a massive Tom Cruise fan, but I respect some of them behind the scenes I've seen. That man's a fucking... Yeah. Well, like he's the, an idiot. What's it, the bike off the cliff one? Because that's, that's the big one that's going we around. He did it five times. Yeah. Five. Five. Five, five times. Time. He's a fucking idiot. He doesn't need to do it, but he's like, <laughs> no, I'm doing it. I've got a bit of res- <laughs> some like newfound respect for the man. Yeah. Well, well, well apparently it's doing well, isn't it? Two very good on, ideas, uh, so... Happy with that. Something like two hundred and forty million dollar budget, and it's already done two hundred and eighty million yeah. as of today yep. already. I think it's about three opening weekend. Now, so. So. Yeah, it's doing well. yeah, they had to, they had to start a bit earlier because of Oppenheimer and Barbie. Because Oppenheimer's taking all the IMAX screens off it this week, <laughs> so they decided to it's release a Nolan it. Film, it's going to happen, isn't it? He owns IMAX. They decided book. to release it on a Monday rather than a Friday. <laughs> Someone's going to someone I know is doing the the double bill. They're watching Barbie in IMAX and then Oppenheimer. In IMAX. Oh, you've got to do it the other way around, surely. Yeah. I I said that. I said you're gonna go. You're gonna go home depressed. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go up home like after watching the fun film. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, he's gonna walk, go home after seeing like 25 million Japanese people being obliterated by an atomic bomb. Oh no, do you know what I mean? You don't need to see that. Oppenheimer, lunch, Barbie. So it's the boom brunch Barbie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the BBB. Yeah, in fact, I think oh. actually I need to book my tickets. I think we're, I think Pip and I are going to do that this weekend. I'm not doing Barbie. I'm off to see up and I'm, oh, I've already booked. I'm going to do both. They've both. I can't be fucked bo- with Barbie, oh, mate. Oh, man, they've both reviewed really well. Isn't Barbie? It's like 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Or something? Yeah, an hour and a half, two hours of Margot <laughs> Robbie front and centre. No, oh, well, no, you twisted my arm a little bit. On an IMAX. Mm. Because yes, but my <laughs> wife's in Oppenheimer, and my wife's in Oppenheimer, and apparently she's nude. So it's going to be all right. <laughs> Talented and beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, next, any more? Uh, is it Heyo or Heyo Miyazaki? Miyazaki? I want to get that right. His final movie, Hey-o. How Do You Live, opens with 11.3 million US dollars in, oh, sorry, yen, I guess, in Japan. No, it's not. That would be US dollars. 11.3 million yen is like 15 quid. It's fuck off. <laughs> 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 I've read more than that. It, it's just like, right I just looked at it because it said in Japan, which threw me for a second. 
Um, it is Studio Ghibli's <laughs> second highest opening in the country. Wow. It's badass. Good. It looks really good. It yep. looks really good. The, um, it's done that without any trailers. I was going to say, I've not yep. seen a single any thing promotional the cover stuff. art. Um, I've, I, I've, I, I've seen the cover art, and that's what I'm saying. It looks good. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> um, <laughs> it looks good. It's called something else over here in Western. Is it? Yeah, a boy and he's something. I can't remember Bob. what it's called. Mm. But it's um, still not got released it. No US or UK or European released it. They might not now with all this shit going on. Fuck knows when we'll get... Well, it needs, well it's made though, isn't it? And, no, and there you go. Like, like... It, Yeah, but Studio Ghibli just... They have literally released a film with no trailer or promotional material other than that one picture and it's a Hayao Miyazaki film. And then it's it got, final one. Well, I mean, it probably is at this age now, but it's yeah, come on. Hayao Miyazaki. His final one was three films ago, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I'll watch shit out of it when it comes out. He just, he just had to put right the mess his son left, that's all. Oh. That's the reason that he's made this film. I, o- I open his will. His son reads it and says, right, son, you can fuck off. <laughs> That's number one. The reason, the reason is, is because he couldn't let Studio Ghibli's last film potentially be it, the worst. Fucking, whatever in the earwig one. Oh, God, it's so, yes. It's the it's worst terrible. Studio Ghibli film. I hated it so much. I haven't I even finished it, mate. I watched most of it. I haven't even bought it. I've got the whole collection on DVD and I just... Yeah. Part of me is like, count. I should buy it because it's part of a, no. the collection, but also... It'll never get watched. Just <laughs> open your wallet. <laughs> anyway, is that it? Over to the world of weird. No, oh, yeah. Outrage at tourism agency after a Philippines advert used footage from other countries. The DDB <laughs> Philippines agency released a statement and said it profusely apologised to the country's tourism secretary and the Department of Tourism, as well as the people of the Philippines. The company used non-original stock footage in a video shown to launch one of its campaigns called Love the Philippines. The video featured many different shots, including aerial footage of sand dunes in Brazil, as well as (laughs) footage of a man riding a buggy in the desert in the United Arab Emirates. Is the Philippines a particularly sandy country that they could get away with that? (laughs) They haven't got a desert at all. Imagine if they're just like they're really fucked up and it just like features some like Big Ben or uh, <laughs> Blackpool Black Tower. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, right? Like the tourism that has to go through in every country on the planet goes through government before it's even <laughs> so greenlit. many people. What are that, what is that government not doing? <laughs> well, Check on their explaining way. the mishap. The agency said in a post, well, the use of stock footage in mood videos is standard practice in the industry. The use of foreign stock yes. footage was an unfortunate oversight on our agency's part. <laughs> Fucking Proper screening gets. and approval processes should have been strictly followed. The use of foreign stock footage in a campaign promoting the Philippines is highly inappropriate and contradictory to DOT's objectives. Idiot. <laughs> they should have just blamed on AI. Such a beautiful country to go and see anyway. They clearly Why left would the it, waste they've it? They've clearly left it to the intern on a Friday afternoon while they all went to the pub. Or the AI. Or the AI. The AI. The AI's Seems coming like... to get you, Oodles. Philippines are beautiful. Man. You, you can literally just take you, one photo Oodles. of some of the beaches and that's it. Done. Stop, yeah. again. Stop saying that. It's Brand coming new. to get <laughs> you. It's a great place. Highly anyway, that's Biggie's mm. breaking news. Done yes. and dusted for one more week. Right, we're going to get into the Nexus. It's a reviews week, so we're going to talk about what we've done the last two weeks. So I hope you've all done something, because you've had plenty of time to crack on. And because I wasn't here last week, I'm going to go first. Cool. So I went to see Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1. Ooh, just talking about that. Yeah. Um, so this is obviously the return of Tom Cruise, it's Vin Rims, Simon Pegg, uh, Rebecca Ferguson are back for what is described as their most dangerous mission yet, like every other film, always <laughs> described as their most dangerous mission yet. Uh, and this sees them um, being tracked down by new, some kind of new weapon that threatens humanity. Um <gasps> Don't really want to get into any spoilers on what that is or who that is or anything like that. Um, I bet it's AI again. Because it Always is like AI. A massive ah. uh, kind of spoiler to get into that. Um, but yeah, I um, I thought it was great fun. Like 
really a really really exciting film um it's not my favorite in the series it's probably my third favorite because i don't think it comes without its flaws but like the action is incredible like the set pieces as you'd expect the stunts uh we've talked we've just been talking about the stunts like they're amazing uh, the that car-, car chase with the uh, Fiat, I think it is, isn't it? That little mini car. Looks yeah, fucking that's awesome really the great. Um, the characters, are, that's just the character. If you've watched the last few Mission Impossible films, you know what the characters are like. They're, they're really good fun. There's a, there's a lot of comedy between them now now as well. Like They riff off each other like a lot better than I think they have ever done as well, which kind of breaks things up a bit, which is really kind of welcomed. They've not it, gone too MCU with it. No, though, no, no, no. It's, it's like... It's not quippy and like, oh, this is yeah. a sad moment, but oh, look, here's a little one-liner. It's just, the it's the perfect little bits of comedy in there. Um, mm. uh, Hayley Atwell is like now joining the <gasps> kind of franchise. She's in it, she oh. is really good. She plays off Tom Cruise uh, off really well. Uh, she plays a thief who kind of gets caught up in all of this business. Because she's she's great. She's act. She's kind of she's paid to steal something that obviously Ethan's after, and the bad guys are after, and all that kind of thing. So she kind of gets embroiled in it all. Uh, the villain is really good. He's kind of re- re- this relent- relentless like hitman. Um, he's the match to Ethan. Basically, he's he's a man that seems that Ethan seems to be afraid of as well, which is good because you don't often get Ethan Hunt being afraid. So mm. he's kind of the kind of met. He's met his match with this with this villain. Um, but yeah, uh, there's some really good moments of tension in it as well, which you don't really get in a lot of modern day blockbusters. Like you know, you compare it to something like Fast X, there's like no tension in that whatsoever. It's just set piece, <laughs> set piece, sure? set piece, <laughs> and all that. Like even even the moments of peril, there's just there's no tension there, is there? There's. I have one issue with that. Very quickly, it's just that it's the last bit that you probably see in most of the trailers. It's the scene where they're the hanging. I think it's in a, a train. And the the hanging is uh, the train breaks up or whatever. Mm. And I hate it when the lead characters clearly got hold of somebody and they shout out, hold on, as if there's going to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that gets used every time in those yeah. scenes. It's like, what? They get, why say hold on? Of course they're going to hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just saying, like, I got you or something. Yeah, <laughs> just not hold he on. Can, well, he oh, kind of no. does in, in that moment. <laughs> I won't really get into it. But yeah, there's like I, I said the the. The action, the stunts, the characters, everything's like, that's that's brilliant. But there is a few things I didn't enjoy. I I wasn't massively keen on the plot. It's very on the nose for today's world. The MacGuffin that they're chasing is, there's a lot of it, and there's a lot of sitting in the rooms talking about said MacGuffin over and over. Like, this conversation about the thing they're after, this key, is just had about four or five times with different sets of people. So as an audience member, you're like, yeah, we know all this. You don't need to keep going over it just because it's a new character in the room. So, And there's like a trick that they play a few times, which gets a little bit boring. Like they do it a few times towards the beginning of the film and it's fun, but then it just keeps getting repeated over and over again, which I thought was just a bit too much. Um, people turning up in the right place at the right time. It's a real bugbear mm. with me in films where the protagonist knows all the information, but then the the antagonist seems to know all of that shit too somehow. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And they just turn up. Bad but, intel. Yeah, there's cop. There's these agents chasing Ethan, uh, but they always seem to know exactly where he is. But they're always there <laughs> too late. It's regardless <laughs> of the fact that it's Ethan and his team sat there working out what they need to do next. Somehow these agents have got that same information. Where they got it from, I have no idea because the information is what Ethan's just gathered. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a bugbear of mine in the film. Some people might not care about it. Um, I, I know why it's done to just drive forward a bit of action and, you know, give the characters a bit of urgency, but it's the same thing. You know, you get in a horror film where Michael Myers is chasing someone, they're mm. fucking pelting it somewhere. They go hide in a building and hide in a toilet cubicle, but, and, but he's behind the door, but he just happens to know exactly where they've gone despite only walking <laughs> yeah. after them. It's like that. Um, yeah. Ah. Craig Tui, who was on our podcast, I was talking to him about it he was, when he came on for the horror month. He coined a phrase called the linear forest, which is no matter where someone is in a forest, like the path is always, they could run left, right and centre, but the but the bad guy always takes the linear path and meets the yeah. meets the our hero. Doesn't like matter dead where on. you go. Doesn't matter where they go, you. they're going to find you. And that kind of happens with this, and that just kind of annoys me a little bit. 
Yeah. But I get why it's done. It's just... It's for cinema, mate. Yeah, I know. Uh, and finally, I'm annoyed by the bike being stunt being shown. Because they literally... Because that would have been amazing to see. Blew their load with the biggest stunt in the film, in the trailer and in the yeah. PR. I've literally watched that scene about 500 times because I adore that little making of the did. Yeah. Yeah. That should have come out. Sensational. That should have come out now this week. Um, yes. I get that it's PR, but this film doesn't need to sell you on that Tom Cruise is going to do a big stunt. We know he's going to do a big stunt. Yeah. There's loads of other. This has got to be his best, his biggest. There's that. I think hanging on the edge of the plane was bigger because that has the potential for. You really did that, and I'll yeah. watch that as yeah. well. Yeah. I want to watch these films. I should watch these. Films. Um, but yeah, Chris Christopher McQuarrie said that there was bigger and better stunts in this. And while there's bigger and better set pieces, there isn't bigger and better stunts. That solo yeah. one stunt that Tom Cruise does, we knew yeah. what was coming. So you know what's going to happen. I mean, it's great when you're watching it and the way they do it is stunning, but you know it's going to come. Whereas if I was sat in the cinema and I didn't know that moment was coming, you'd be like, <gasps> I'd be like, you fucking crazy bastard. Because I didn't know, <laughs> I know, I would have known watching that, he actually, he's actually done that. But yeah. yeah, but yeah. Other than that, it's brilliant. Uh, there's some homages to Uncharted in here. Um, apparently, that was completely not on Macquarie's mind because he's never played the games, never seen the games. It's just that because he's not a fucking gamer. The train sequence that Biggie's alluded to. There's a helicopter yeah. sequence, like the, you know, the, in those are kind coincidence. of coincidence. Yeah, they're just coincidences. The, but it's it's a nice little. It feels like a homage to Uncharted, but apparently it wasn't. Lots of Tom Cruise running. Lots of Tom Cruise running. He runs around <laughs> Venice. He really fucking runs. He's good at running. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's just another great addition into the Cruise and Macquarie mm. Mission Impossible. And I actually found it quite funny that I've seen Fast X this year and there's two set pieces in this film that are pretty similar to that. But not in a bad way. It's just, oh. it's one of those, what are the chances that they Fast X did a chase sequence in Rome, going down the Roman, yeah. going down the steps in Rome, and they did it. And also, also Vin Diesel went down on a motorbike. Yeah, and there's, some, there's something towards the end of the <laughs> end of the film that's like it's very similar. And it was just one of those ones. If you've seen Vin the Diesel film, would never do that. Yeah, it just gave me a chuckle to think. Just jumped into space on a bike. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tom Cruise is going to go to space, isn't he? He's already said yeah. one of his films is so. He did the vomit comic for one film. I won't put it past Dead Reckoning Part 2 going into space somehow, just so he can do it. Tom Cruise and International Space Station. It's your typical Mission Impossible (laughs) fare, so really really enjoyable. Um, That was me. So, uh, Oodles, what have you been up to? Quite a few bits, actually, but the main thing I have done this week, I can't talk about because that's for a different podcast. I've watched (laughs) uh, another Harry Potter film. But less said about that the better. If you are a patron, Kenny Potter. Kenny, Kenny Potter. I forgot to mention it last time and stick at a right go at me. <laughs> Didn't you stick? Yeah. Sell that shit, boy. It literally, over the internet, spanked me. Big style. But yes. Oh, on that that's... note, I've been watching Harry Potter with my daughter. We're up to uh, nope. film four. Spoil the whole so thing I for me am now, going to listen to your podcast now that I've seen the movies. Oh, good. good. And you're one of those... Jamie gets it, doesn't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, I'm not going to even give you a hint of what I think about that, the, the third Harry Potter film. The other things I have been doing, <clears throat> I played a little game called Pokemon Violet for about three hours. I don't like it, guys. You don't like it? I don't, I don't like it. I think it's shit. I know some people liked it. I think I'm done with Pokemon, me. I like the 2D ones, you know, the old school ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Just, I like, I go for your gyms. And this is like a non-linear, didn't you, open didn't you, world thing. Was it? Didn't you like Arceus? <clears throat> I did like Arceus. Yeah, yeah. So maybe but, it's this but new that, style. But that's not the same because you don't do gyms and stuff in Arceus. You know what I mean? That's before that kind of culture existed in that world. It's the first game canonically. Do you know what I mean? This is. I've never played a Pokemon. I, oh, just play the play, my favorite one's probably Diamond, which I think it's like the fourth iteration of it i think it peaked at that diamond and pearl and then it just went I've I've only gold ever, and silver I've only ever played red yeah same it's great it's great i, just, it's great, I got on a dud dud hooked on that no i got a, a mm. actually bought a game boy 
and Pokemon Red to play that, and I was yeah, it's fantastic. obsessed with it. Like up to yeah. like two, three in the morning, sat there under my bedroom light just playing that. Like, yeah, I like I liked them all up Diamond and Pearl. Like it never got for, for me. It just, it's just been diminishing returns ever since. Arcus was a nice little refresher, but yeah, I'm not I'm not very keen. So if anyone wants to buy it, let me know. <laughs> uh, I'm always trying to flog stuff. The other thing, um, another thing I didn't like as well. Secret Wars. I've been watching Secret Wars and I don't like it at all. See, this 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 interests <sighs> me that you said you don't like this because you've often talked about you you enjoy stuff where yeah. people sit in rooms and talk. Yeah, and there's a yeah. lot of sitting in rooms and talking in this show. Yeah, there is. Um, it's basically it was built for me, but the problem is I don't care about these people that are in this room talking. Do you get what I mean? I like Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury. I feel like he's lost his Nick Fury edge, though. I liked him. He is leader of the Avengers yeah, and stuff but like that. He's just... meant to be, and he is meant to be a bit different. He's meant to be. He's meant to be, yeah. Um, I like um, Ben Mendelsohn. Cause I, I will watch him just fucking read the phone book. He's he is great. Fantastic. Um, Amelia Clark's not even terrible. I just think they've squandered this great idea. The, one of the best comic book acts ever. This would they've have been. Squandered it. This would have been better for the overall. Um, yep. Phase arc rather than the multiverse. Yep, I agree. So what have they just... done then? Is it not based on the comic at all then? It, a little bit, a little bit. They've modernised it. Obviously, Secret Wars is um, supposed to be like a Cold War play, isn't it? When it came out, the Cold War was still warm, and everyone was shitting themselves about un- hidden enemies and stuff like that. And with this, it's modern day, and it's they've still got that baggage from the last phase of the MCU to chat about all the revelations. No, I mean, I'm not going to spoil what, but nearly every character you've known and loved wasn't that character. <laughs> there have been aliens all along. Oh, are you talking not... about Secret Invasion or Secret Wars? Secret Invasion, sorry. Oh, um, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Fucking hell. I'm poorly. I'm poorly, mate. I'm poorly. <laughs> That's but what yeah. threw me. I was like, I didn't even know it was out. Oh, no, Secret, not... Secret wasn't out for like four more years. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Secret Invasion. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Um, but yeah, it's it's not over yet. It's not finished yet. No, I think. Two more, um, two more yeah, left. Two more. One of the episodes was really fucking good. But I'm sick of like getting through half seasons of things like I did with Witcher, <laughs> with this one good episode <laughs> in a group. I'm fucking getting pissed off at that. Last um, one was all right. This, yeah. this week, last week's. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was That's actually a big yeah. reveal in that. Yeah, yeah, the reveal was pretty cool actually, and not it didn't piss me off. I was like, oh yeah, that's that were clever. Uh, but the main thing I want to bring up is I'm I'm you know me I'm finger uh, fingers always on the pulse. I started watching Narcos. Narcos. Mm. Seen that? Have you, yes. have you all seen that? Nice. No, I've not seen so, that. So Narcos, starring Pedro Pascal as Javier Peña. That's my great Colombian accent. Um, Wagner Mora as Pablo Escobar and Boyd Holbrook as Steve Murphy. They're the main three in it. I've only seen season one. I know things change up and stuff like that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, this is fucking insane. The good. <laughs> fucking hell, wow. man. Incredible. Insane. The good. You've all seen the memes of Pablo Escobar sat on a swing sad. Oh, is that where that's from, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's great. He, Wagner Mora is fantastic as Escobar. Like, oh, with the, with Stig, when he does that mugshot, the famous mugshot, is so fucking good. And just yeah. everything about it, I'm learning so much about like um, 19th of April movement or M19, as everyone knows of them. Uh, the, uh, I'm learning about the drug enforcement agency that I didn't realise back in the late 70s, early 80s, the Medellin cartel. It's just, it's all real. That's what's fucking so good about it. All of it is real. I mean, there's Hollywood into, you know what I mean? There's a lot of, a lot of shooting and stuff like that. But it was a I mean, bloody little happened. drug war. It was, yeah, it was a, it, it was Reagan's just say no campaign. Well, Nancy Reagan, wasn't it? Just say no. Um, that that really blew up in like Colombia and uh, and Peru and stuff like that. Fucking hell, people were getting shot every day, all day. You weren't the stake, just, just blasted down it. And Escobar was just like to the people, to the people in that country. He was this philanthropist. They thought he was an owner of a taxi firm. <laughs> you want to Not the richest man like on the planet. Really go down, down shit. Yeah, yeah, the amount of money is incredible. He had so much money, he let some money get eaten by rats. 
They still haven't found like all the money he buried. Yeah. He was the richest man on the planet. Just buried all his, his crazy. Just buried like, it. Just buried it. Cause it's like <laughs> to keep it away from the feds. So if any listener doesn't know Pablo Escobar is, he basically made cocaine like the thing that it is, especially in the eighties when it was different. Now I know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sat here being all sober and stuff. It wasn't great to sit and watch some of it. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel, feel your teeth getting a bit itchy. There was, there was one bit where she says, oh, this woman, a drug mule, she, oh, no, two, key, uh, t- two grams exploded in her stomach. I'm like, two grams, mate. Fucking hell. Is that it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill her, mate. But, yeah, it's, it's just so good. You can't watch it anyway for a bit, Gadget. Because every scene someone's smoking, is, it's, ah. worse than, it's worse than Mad Men. Oh, <laughs> you can't watch it yet. You're not allowed to because you'll just start there going, chewing no, fingernails off. No, it's... Um, oh, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> what? what? Well, I mean, it's not really a spoiler, is it? We know he got killed in real life. Yes, but, I know what happened, mate. Uh, but, like, the show doesn't end with him and that's one of the best things it goes off and like yeah, deals that's what like, I'm thinking goes and often deals with the Cali cartel which is like the Does it? the cartel that rose out yeah. of Escobar's yeah. demise the ashes basically yeah. wasn't it I know but all about it I've read loads of books on it all and stuff like that but because I because I, just... I watched it I was like I was like isn't the show meant I was to just going to carry on Escobar <laughs> I was going to carry on then it carries on you're like oh yeah, yeah it's still really amazing <laughs> yeah like people don't people forget that like Escobar had a stint in in in, in the Colombian Parliament. He was an ambassador. No, what, what what was he? Um, a governor for very for for like a day. <laughs> he got literally got voted in. People loved him, and yeah, then it all it president, all starts to crumble. He ran for president. And <laughs> yeah. um, stranger people have got presidencies before. Trust me. But and it's since. just it's <laughs> and since <laughs> it's just definitely since it's just. It's a fantastically well constructed, like Hollywood y, but it still respects its Colombian heritage. Like 99% of it's subtitled. So if you're one of those people, I can't watch subtitles, grow up, watch it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you've, got to, you've got to concentrate on it, haven't you, Stig? Because, like yeah, yeah, a lot of it's subtitles. It's, not what, it's definitely not one you can just stick on in the background. No. You've, got, you've got to read what's going on. Like, it's all the, all the Colombian stuff in subtitles. And the um, best thing about having Boyd Holbrook in it, and I like him a lot, especially since he was the Corinthian in, um, in uh, fucking, fucking hell. Sandman. 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 It's fucking lost. I'm so poorly. In Sandman. I like him because he's the the Westerners' view into something we don't really know about, like in Medellin and Colombia itself. It, it, he's there for us, isn't he? As, yeah, as I think this Avatar. is probably the best thing that he's still done, though. And I thought yes. he might, I thought his career might have kicked off a bit more. With his... No, he did that. He did the Predators. <laughs> yeah, he just seems to be <laughs> like, like he's in the new Indiana Jones film, and he's fine, but he's very interchangeable he seems character. To be a bit that, part character, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's the henchman. Like he's like the main yeah. second in charge, like un- underneath like the main villain. And I'd like to, I'd like to see him given a title. Role, see what he can do, see what he can fly. Because again, he was the baddie in uh, Logan, baddie in uh, Sandman. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I'd like to see him give him a stab at something, see if he can do it. But yeah, he's he's a great thing. But uh, uh, Pedro Pascal's fantastic. He is a fucking. He loves a shag in this, doesn't he? That man's a. He's addicted to <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like seeing Pedro Pascal's ass, it's a way in. It's a definitely a way in for you. It's just, it's just candy's in. Fant- yeah, it's just fantastic. Everyone in it is on fire. Even the henchmen and stuff. It's just, oh, I, I just, I know, I know, I'm a few years too late, but fucking hell. No, I'm this saying, I to, heard good things about it. One of the best it, things Netflix have done. Got one around of the best to it. Yeah, done. I'm definitely going to watch it now. I haven't watched Narcos Mexico though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it. I'm all. gonna, I'm gonna watch I do need thing. to watch that. Yeah, this all got great reviews, but yeah, it's just. And there's a lot, when you're watching it, you're seeing all these memes that you've seen over here, especially the Escobar memes. You're like, oh, this is that bit. This is that bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just so well made and I fucking love it. I want everyone else to watch it as well. If you've not, it's just, even if you're not interested in it, it's just a great bit of crime. This like crime drama is, there's some humour in it as well. There's some funny bits, but most of it's just horrific. <laughs> it's a lot of people getting mowed down. But yeah, yeah, that's 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 been my few weeks, mate. Good stuff, good stuff. Gadget, what about you? 
Uh, uh, so I've been continuing on with a lot of things that I've had in train. I'm nearly at the end of Yakuza Like a Dragon, and I'm nearly at the end of... It's taking years, this. Well, you see, Yakuza Like a Dragon, I'm playing it. That, that It's like my Friday night with a beer kind of game. Oh. So I'm not playing it all the time. Um, I'm nearly at the end of System Shock Remake, which is fucking good. Um, my only complaint with that is I f- that there was one thing I forgot from the 90s. It's when you're going through, the, the game will give you p- bits and pieces for a code you need to enter at the end of the game. And I forgot to write the fuckers down, so I had to go right the way to the start of the game and grab them all again and work your way back through the whole fucking facility. You should have just Googled it. <laughs> no, it's random. All the codes oh, are, all, all the codes in the game are randomly generated for every oh, player. Fuck. So all the all the guides tell you where to find the codes, not what they are. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had to write, go right the way to the first level of the game and right the way back up again. Thankfully you can, but oh. Jesus Christ. Uh, but the main thing I want to talk about was uh, I've watched, uh, and we're a little bit late on this, it came out the back end of last year, but uh, Pip and I this week watched the last season of Staged. The, oh, yeah, I love it. The, the love it. David Tennant and Michael Sheen lockdown project. They're, some of, they're my favourite duo at the moment, them two, especially with good omens and stuff. Oh, yeah, they're, fu- they're fucking great. Uh, <sighs> so this came out in november last year and it was it kind of led up like the last episode being uh just around about christmas i think mm, yes um yeah well if you watched it week by week i think it all got dumped on brick box as well at the same time um so if you haven't seen stage stage started off at the beginning of very beginning of the pandemic actually the first episode of it came out like in the june i want to say yeah june 2020 so what two months after everyone locked down um and it was basically, it was a project for them to actually have something to do and to create some entertainment, but it was the two of them dealing with the pandemic, talking over a laptop, over Zoom, um, rehearsing a play. And yep. farcical chaos comes from it. So good. Yeah, so good. Uh, second series um, came out in 2021 and dealt with the success that came from that, like them reacting to the success. <laughs> yeah. And then a year, a year and a half later, season three comes in. And season three is a little bit different um because uh, it, it starts off with uh, Simon the uh, the producer director of uh, of what they're doing trying to get Michael and David to uh, um agree to a christmas staged version of a play called six characters in search of an author which is a um it's, it's like a meta narrative kind of play where the characters are are searching for an author that you know that that it's trying to break down the concept of authorship into characters when the characters become their own creations and that kind of thing um, mm. which then later devolves into A Christmas Carol when they can't decide on the proper format for it. And then it goes off the rails after the second episode because it becomes a kind of metafictional behind-the-scenes documentary of the show entitled Backstaged. Yes. And it has uh, David Tennant's wife, Georgia, trying to engineer the, the idea that maybe the documentary is more interesting than the TV series. And doing things like th- th- they get into a writer's room and think, okay, we've got the first two episodes uh, done, so we need a third one. Guys, start writing. You've got to meet with the BBC later. So Georgia yeah. gets them a, a, a production office where they get, they get to go in there. She fucks with the heating because she knows Michael she, Michael doesn't like to be too hot. She, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> she, she, um, she engineers it to the David's being up all night with like like a faulty uh, fire alarm or something like that. It's, she's like making Big Brother type stuff, isn't it? When they used to yeah. fuck them up in Big Brother. Um, uh, gets the food order wrong and, yeah. and make sure there's a guy <laughs> drilling outside and stuff like that, just to irritate them to get some content out of it. it it's, yeah, th- it's This great. is like Oodles making a TV series because content is king from George's perspective. <laughs> always, <laughs> always, always. Um, and it's it's brilliant. It's um, I I wasn't as keen on the second series of it um, because it felt like they were rehashing the same thing. Whereas this, the, the the whole concept is they want to do something different. Like in the story of it, the two of them are kind of a little bit sick of each other because they've just done Good Omen season two, and you know that every time they do an interview, mm. um, uh, someone's asked, "Oh, so, so what's Michael doing? What's David doing?" You know, it's like they're almost like they're joined at the hip, and it's they, they play- treat them like Ant and Deck, don't they? They do, yeah, and they're, they're kind of playing around with um, with the idea of it. And it's really funny just watching them get progressively more and more annoyed, uh, more and more annoyed, and like the weird things that they do. So like, so that like for a, a, at one point, David is absolutely convinced that George is up to something. So they have a phone conversation where David sat in boxes in the attic yeah. to so a, to avoid the cameras that George is putting up for the backstage documentary. Uh, Michael t- uh, it ends up at one point doing an airfix kit in his car because he wants peace and quiet. <laughs> and <laughs> like stuff like that it just gets really weird with that but the last episode the last episode is fucking beautiful 
because they because they're doing a version of a Christmas Carol over Zoom, and it oh. all goes fucking wrong. Um, Been there, but no, that feeling. We did it before then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there is there, there is a kind of brutal honesty to it, like between them. Because I, I, I'm treating yeah, them as they are ca- screaming at each other, aren't they? they? They are screaming at each other, but no, there's, there's they get to this openly brutal, brutally honest moment between them, and I'm treating them as characters because yeah. they're fictionalized versions of themselves. They're not really playing oh, themselves, yeah. and they like each the dis- other in real life. yeah, the disagreements that they're having in the show are not the disagreements they have in real life. No, but it ends in a really beautiful way, and there's this wonderful moment at the, just at the very end of it, where the two of them are just sat staring across the Zoom at each other while people are kind of filtering in the background, like the two of them are kind of stuck in this moment while everyone else is moving around. And it's just gorgeous. And it ends really well. And um, they actually also released a um, a outtakes version of yes, it as well, did. which is like the seventh episode of that season, which is so funny watching them say these ridiculous things and then just break a like corpse <laughs> on Zoom to each other. <laughs> or Michael Sheen just accidentally closing the Zoom call a bit like Biggie does. You know, like stuff like that. <laughs> You do it all the fucking yeah. time. You click the red X because you get the wrong one. Um, <laughs> it's a really gentle, funny series. And I think it's there's 20 episodes in total, not including the um, outtakes episode. It's worth mm. going through the whole lot. Plus they're short as well. They're like 10 to 15 minutes long. They're not very long I episodes. I watched the whole lot of them on uh, Daily Motion. Yeah. Just I think they're all right on there. BritBox. They're either all on BritBox now or the iPlayer, but you can watch through all, all three series. Absolutely so worth good. a watch, and it's it's a good reflection as well because obviously at the time when this came out, and obviously now like the pandemic stuff's kind of over, everything's back to normal ish. Um, it's interesting to see the way they talk about how they started in twenty twenty versus where they are, and how everything's evolved from that. So yeah, I I really enjoyed it, and yeah. I think it was a nice, interesting, and farcical way of wrapping it all up. Um, I love I love them both too, especially like. The remarks on the English and stuff, because one's Welsh, one's Scottish. It's like it's just I just think it's badass. I just think it's a great concept when there was nothing else to do. Yeah. I think it's perfect. I think it's on par with the uh, the Steve Coogan and um Rob Bride and the trip. Oh yeah, where they do where just every episode of them sat at a, a, a dinner. I just fucking love both of those things. And it is I, it, it, I it love is it. it it's perfect for you, Oodles, because it's two people talking at each other. This, I, I just I just <laughs> I just got enraptured by it. I just, I think it's, I think it's a great show, and everyone should watch Staged as well. Yeah, great. So, Ooh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's my fortnight. Excellent. Just leaves you, Biggie. Nothing. Yeah, cool. so I finally right, got. So... <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please! <laughs> Don't bully him. Nasty. So I finally got around to watching Andor, which came out last year, which is, of course, Andor. the uh, Star Wars Andor. Did we need it? It's debatable, but it's no. a prequel to the prequel Rogue One um, TV series for Disney+. Plus. Um, I really enjoyed this, actually. I thought it was a really interesting great. take on the Star Wars universe, because although events and certain people, not the most famous ones, are alluded to throughout, there's lots of... Easter eggs if you're really into the uh, Star Wars universe and stuff I even I didn't even know. But, yeah, it just follows the character that we were introduced in Rogue One, or one of them, uh, Diego Luna, um, plays uh, Cassian Andor, who's sort of... You see him as a, more like a petty thief, basically, and it's sort of... It alludes to the sort of early days of the Empire's effect on different planets as well, so we actually get to spend time away from the office places. And I just liked it. I thought the production values were really good. Um, the, the effects are fantastic. There's obviously a lot of work went into this. Um, but they've got loads of great character actors um, to sort of bring a bit more depth to the roles. You've got Stellan Skarsgård, Fiona Shaw, um, Denise Goff, who I thought was brilliant as Dedra, um, one of the Imperial um, Security Bureaus, I think they're called, Investigating Bureau. Um, but yeah, it basically follows him as a petty thief, Cassian, um, you get a little bit of history of his early events. He gets adopted by um, Marva, and he ends up um, doing uh, selling dodgy parts that they find from the Empire for money. Um, ends up getting noticed by uh, the Empire, looking into what's going on, and you just follow his path as he end up. I think there's a planned season two for this. That obviously, when things go into production, 
they're going to maybe try and make it almost lead right up to the movie Rogue One. And it's unusual following a character that, if I'm allowed to spoil it, that you kind of know Ooh, the outcome Rogue of One. The... Everyone knows what happens mm. in Rogue One. Like, those characters, you know, we kind of... People died getting those Death Star plans. People died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely There's a reason weird, that these characters of... never appeared in anything yeah. after Rogue One. Yeah. <laughs> People died. Yeah. Many lives so, were yeah, lost. <laughs> It's unusual that you're following characters that, you know, probably, oh, well, not probably, aren't going to make it. But um, I just thought it was really well acted. It, it's only, I think it was 12 episodes, and they're about 45 minutes long, just under an hour. Um, but I just thought it was really well acted, um, really interesting. Space politics, then. Yes. I might, I might, I might, I've only seen the first two episodes. I might kick back into it's, it. Yeah, it's just a lot of different viewpoints. Um, it's obviously like how, guerrilla warfare um, rebellion, isn't it? Rather than being, but that's yeah, what Rogue One was, really wasn't it? Yeah, yeah rather than guerrilla warfare. We're a rebellion yeah. with with ships and people you and, know, Jed- and Jedi Jedi <laughs> that can go against them. It's like we are just the regular normal people trying to fight in the slums and okay. I might get another will. Yeah. And you start to see the fear that the Empire started to create and yeah. how it impacted on uh, little uh, urban societies, etc. Um, there is a particular standout episode. I thought there was quite a few, but there's one particular one that's set in a, like a floating prison. That's the one that's been uh, nominated. Where, uh, yeah, where Cassian ends up. Andy Serkis has a great role in that as well. Um, and it's, it's a really well acted... Is he a monkey um, in it No, it's just him. <laughs> no, he, he plays no, himself. just him. Yeah. No way. <laughs> But yeah, it's, I just thought it was really good. It was just a really interesting choice. I mean, do people want a prequel to all of this? I don't know, but I'd like to. It's got that Mandalorian feel, really w- worth a watch, keeps you invested. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Really well done. I'm really interested to see what they do with season two, without a doubt. Mm. But yeah, mm. it comes yeah. highly recommended from me. What, what you said, when it was announced, everyone was like, what's the point in this? But um, this is the best Star Wars thing Disney have done, in my opinion. Wow. Like, wow. Yeah. I think this is the best. And you get to this, see... Um, the, the most, the best written, the best acted, like, just the stories engaging. Like Biggie said, even though you know the outcome of these characters, it still doesn't take away from the tension. Not at all. Yeah. And it, you see the how life is working for the Empire as well, you know, sort of your day-to-day work life as a... Somebody in the bureau Those in the poor empire. Those contractors and, uh, on that Death Star. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, <laughs> but lot the, of bureaucracy. The, the petty bureaucracy. politics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that goes on there as well. But no, it's really good, really interesting. It, it's got your typical feel good moments that you're going to have with American TV series like, hey, go, go the rebels and all that kind of Is stuff. That, I think but, what's going. No, no, no. No, no, There is one moment where, which is like a big kind of a big moment in it. And they wanted to drop the first F bomb in Star Wars, but they were told to. They did a take with it, and then they had to do like a proper take. They weren't allowed to use it. <laughs> did he say "fuck you" instead? No. What does he say in that in that Jedi Survivor? There's a swear word that they use instead of "fuck" all the way through it. Have you seen that new that Jedi Survivor game? I played it. No. Flak. No, no, that's that's again Galaxy in it when they say flak. There's another one that they use. I'm not sure. Oh, I can't not remember. Drock. Someone on that. They just use using Drock. Yeah, 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 they use a word instead of fuck. There's one, it's there's like one that you always clever. use in Battlescar Galactica that really annoyed me. That they, they can't what is what, it? I can't remember what frack. it is. But oh, fracking. Yeah. Frack, yeah. Fracking. <laughs> Somewhat close to fuck, but they say frack, yeah. yeah. Frack off. Mother fracker. Yeah. Mother fracker. I agree, though. I think I do. I really, I think it's really good. Really worth your time, this one. I'll get a will. Yeah, I'll get a will. And then... There are obviously other creatures, species, aliens, etc. But they're sort of more in the background. But it just kind of helps to create that sort of feeling that there's a universe out there. And like you say, it's not on the same planets that we used to. It's not Tatooine. Just makes things. <laughs> no, I mean, Car- Carasson. Is it Carasson? Is that how you pronounce Coruscant. it? Coruscant. Coruscant. Um, that that makes is the galactic but... capital, though. So that makes sense that that's yeah, there. Yeah, because Mon Mothma's uh, Mon Mothma oh. is in it. But early ah, days as a right. senator, and you, you got that sort of politics side of things going on. But she's Any Jar Jar uh, a double Biggs? agent. Jar Jar? No, none of that. You've no. even got a likable droid in there as well. B two emo. He was really cool. B two emo. He is emo. <laughs> yeah, you are too emo, mate. B two emo. That's <laughs> he's, 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 he's a little emo. <laughs> Does he brush his fringe to the side? <laughs> <laughs> it was he's a little phase, up. mom. <laughs> little droid that um, is really supportive to Marva, and he, he's got his own personality. And uh, yeah, he was like very likable. 
But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like you say, if you started watching it, Oodles, I'd continue for you. I watched the first two it. and I can't remember what came out instead. And I just were like, yeah, I'm not going back. But I've got time. I've got spare time now. We only do Nexuses every two weeks now. I've got time. Yeah. Mm. Great. That's everyone. But Candy has actually dropped us some feedback. She has, cool yeah. She has. Cool she, has. Uh, she says, hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm not on the pod this evening. I spent the day building the fucking gamer bed. and It's absolutely finished oh. me off. The thought of having a shower and putting makeup back on at this point is an absolute no. Don't let anyone tell you I've got the shits. My arsehole is fine. She's specifically <laughs> put that in there. Mine's not. Uh, this week I watched an A24 film called Pearl. Until mm, writing this, I was completely unaware that it's a sequel to another film called X. So while you're all chatting, I shall be lying in my new game or a bed and catching up on X. Pearl is set in 1918 during World War One. She is stuck at home on a farm with her overbearing German mother and severely disabled father. Her isolation leads her to live inside her own head, a place where life takes place in glorious technicolor and offers her the chance to dream of a world outside of the farm. So this, is where, mm, this is where <laughs> things take a turn for the stabby, as Pearl struggles to deal with the reality of war, isolation, and her own needs and desires. It's a horror thriller presented as an homage to 1950s classics, using visuals that could be taken from The Wizard of Oz, the soundtrack and easiness Ooh. of a Hitchcock film and characters that look like they're from the American gothic art, Pearl is super fun and quirky. It's written by okay. Maya Goth and Ty West. Maya Goth also Ooh. taken the lead role while Ty West directs. Its visual horror is reasonably tame for the most part. The real horror taking place in Pearl's mind. I really enjoyed its quirkiness. Okay. Yeah, it was filmed yep. back to back with X. I saw X, so I need to watch Pearl. Yeah, it's good. I think Pearl's better than X, personally. I think X is just... Oh, wow. Okay. X is a bit of your standard... Stabby slasher. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. homage and to uh, homepage the... to uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah, except it was old people managing to take out a load of teen, like young adults. With the yeah. box, which... But uh, this is um, <laughs> uh, Pearl is the old woman in X. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. So X, this is a prequel to that. This basically tells the story. Of I'm sure the, we've mentioned that on this podcast. Yeah, the old we? the old woman in X. She played it as well. She played yeah, the she old plays woman that. Well. She plays two parts in X. Actually, she plays one of the oh. porn stars and um, Pearl, and she's actually nice. doing a third film, which is again another prequel where she's playing that porn star. Nice. Can't remember the name of that character. Fair right. enough. <laughs> also, um, yeah, Pearl stars the new Superman. David Cor- yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's when yeah. I, like I say, that's when I noticed him and thought he looks a lot like Clark Kent. <laughs> he ain't ugly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she also fucks a scarecrow in it. So, you know, fun and games. Nice. As you do. <laughs> because, she, like Candy said, <laughs> she's a bit. All right. Not, not there with, not there with the uh, reality. Mm. Well, shall I move on to the rest of the feedback then? And let's not delve into that any further. Yes. I mean, okay. Yes. Uh, Mike Holstead has said, finally getting around to finishing Final Fantasy VII Remake with Final Fantasy XVI now my possession, thanks to a birthday present. I also got the Player's Handbook and Dungeon Master's Guide for D&D, which should make our games run smoother. They will not make your games run smoother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, come, I'll come play with you. They won't run smooth. No. I'll help. I'll help. <laughs> uh, that <laughs> argument has now been put to bed now, hasn't it? it nope. No, it's not because I'm getting people texting us now going, God, Stig was a bit of a dick with that one, wasn't he? <laughs> really? I just thought I was being in the, in the right. A gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Stig's camp. I am. <laughs> I told him that. Team Stig. Team Stig. Hashtag Team Stig. There is, there is, there, there, there is a debate amongst the listeners, which is fair enough, actually. It's getting the, it's getting the, uh, the engagement going. Content is king. It is. Uh, but yeah. D- don't invite stick to your games if you want it to run smooth. Or Oodles, for that matter. He'll, he, Oodles will just walk in and put a metal pot on the ground and set fire to it. And nothing will happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, Rob Jones has said, I'm going to lose any cool that I once had because this is a full-on USA, aren't we all the saviors of the world thing. But I've been watching the last yeah. series of Jack Ryan and it's proper dog shit what? chewing gum TV. And I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's no, objectively thanks. bad, but that's okay. I, don't think I've ever... I liked it. I, I must watch the latest It's season. got Jim Alpert in it. Uh, I haven't seen any of it. In fact, I haven't even seen it advertised. I'm just not fucking bothered about watching it. <laughs> uh, He's thinking, ain't Jack Ryan? It's what's his name? Um, the author. What's his name? Uh, Tom Clancy. Present danger, isn't it? Yeah, it's Tom Clancy. Oh, is that Jack? Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. Yeah. 
Tom Clancy. Uh, America, fuck yeah. He also says, also watching Detectorists and getting transported back to a simpler time of 2015. What a wonderful show. Someone yeah. else has messaged me about the Detectorist today. One of my pals. They said, you like Yeah, I started watching that. I must I go back talk. to that. I saw the talk. You like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch it. Uh, stand by for the diseased ramblings of Super Natty Cat. Uh, she says, this week me and Stuarticus read the original Paddington Bear. It's a 10-minute read and Stuarticus scores it a 10 out of 10. There's peril. Paddington falls into a jam and cream tart and can't get out of the bathtub. He does. Bath <laughs> he does. Oh, he does. There's oh, mystery. He's, bug, yeah. he's from darkest Peru but won't indulge further. And overall, it's very cute. I, on the other mm. hand, have, have in between letting a tiny human eat my boob, play a 30-minute <laughs> stint on Fall Guys and forgetting how freaking addictive it is. There's a ton of new free content and costumes and you don't forget how to play it, even if you've not played in several months. I also tried The Lies of P, and whilst, yes, I managed to get to the end and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I found it difficult to get into the Souls-like gameplay in short stints or when attempting to watch Stuartica so he doesn't jump out of a window while playing. <laughs> uh, and then you she goes on to give some feedback and say, I was also loving the Candyland feature. I second the idea of strapping rays into the Titanic to lift it from the depths of the ocean. Think of all the films where this technology had been around. It would have ended much, much sooner. Deep Blue Sea, Finding Nemo, Castaway, Titanic. Don't think they tended to carry a lot of raisins around with them, though. We've got some <laughs> anger to discuss about that in the green room. Fair enough. <laughs> Hair and candy are just like... They're the same person. Chaos. Yeah. Madness. Have you ever seen two of them in the have same room? Have they ever been seen in the same room? Yeah. No. Evil. Incarnate. Uh, Xenos has said I started playing Elden Ring perhaps unsurprisingly I'm not very good at it one of my friends managed to direct me to Florida by which I mean Caleb and I now have a <laughs> I like that <laughs> I now have a meteorite staff and the ability to throw rocks at people but I'm terrible at dodging I'll get used to it eventually but right now I'm just trying to work out where I'm actually going and he says and yes I did survive getting out of Caleb <laughs> Florida <laughs> it, it, it's that makes so much sense <laughs> Oh yeah, it's very Florida. Uh, also, also worth pointing out that RKG started their playthrough, their retry playthrough of Elden Ring this weekend. Oh, there. Yeah, first episode's like two hours long. I like them boys. Yeah, I like them boys. Cool it was boys, it, it was a good time watching that. Watch, uh, watch the live mm. premiere of it. I should go back and play that at some point. Really, Funny. you should get it. You'll start again now, mate. You'll start again now, mate. You forgot that. Well, which, 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 which do you want to finish more though, Dragon Quest or Elden Ring? Dragon Quest, you can, you can take all your life to play that. Don't worry about yeah, that. In and out, Dragon it, Quest is fine. Yeah, play that it, tune in when you want. It will take all your life. It will. will. Too many other games. I know, far too, I know. Gone. That's the problem I'm having. I'm, I'm, this is why I'm link. trying desperately to get through some games because in August we've got Baldur's Gate 3 and then... That's all my summer's going to be is Baldur's and, Gate, mate. And then Armored Core 6 at the oh, end of shit. August. I've got then... to play Final <laughs> Fantasy. I still want to play Plague's Tale Requiem. Still and then sep play. September we've got Starfield as well, so the Star Wars think games. Of all that, think of all that luscious Call of Duty you're going to be getting on Game Pass that you're going to have to get through. Well, that's 2025, <laughs> so that's fine. That's, that's what, what I might have to do over the summer when I'm not revising and reading. It's just Some absolutely blast everything. Yep. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. But it it sucks. It's Baldur's Gate and Armored Core and Starfield. You so need, close you together. need to play FF16 because it's like 30 hours, mate. That's a Christmas it, game. Yo. I'm just de declaring that that's a Christmas game for me. Only okay. thirty hour game that good ish. Spider Man uh, will be Christmas. Oh fuck, fuck Spider Man! <laughs> okay, last up we have Angry Kurt. He's saying this week I was playing some Aliens, Dark and shit. I need to finish that. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't really click with me. Whilst I'm sure it's as good as Gadget says, if you're into that kind of game, I was expecting something more similar to XCOM turn based gameplay. I did say it was real time all the time, but okay. you did. You told me that as well. So then I moved back to playing some Tears of the Kingdom after receiving the official guidebook in the post and it's caused me to start enjoying it again. I'm not using the guide for everything, just to give me a bit of direction as I think I'm the type of gamer that needs some level of guidance or linearity, even when it goes against how many people would want to how many people would want to play this game. But it means mm. I'm enjoying it again, so who cares what others think? Exactly, Kurt. I agree. Other than that, I've Welcome. been working through watching yep. the Mission Impossible films. I'm watching the third tonight as of writing this. I've not seen them before. The first two were both good in their own ways. First serious, second silly, but good action films. I've only seen one and two, and two were shy. I did like two. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I still, I still, oh, you know, still maintain it's my favourite bit of cinema, though, in two. Why do you want to break when me? They're at, when they're at the horse racing, 
and the fucking the guy comes over to do Grey Scott with a 16 meg compact flash card. He puts it in his <laughs> camera and watches this high resolution animation of a context free <laughs> virus. I fucking yeah. love that. <laughs> Because I remember in fucking 1999 when that film came out or whenever it was, hey, going, that's bullshit. Yeah, you have <laughs> to suspend your disbelief when it comes to the gadgets in Mission Impossible. There's one of them in the later yeah. film, yeah. but they use this like screen to do something with it. Let's remember, this is a series that even in the 70s, people used to rip masks <laughs> off the face that were like real life <laughs> fucking prosthetics. Yeah, so yeah, don't worry about uh, it. you got you got to I just mean, say, these, masks, these, these people... masks also changed your height as well. <laughs> Ah, special <laughs> government agents. They just have money and tech that we've never oh, seen before. I mean, you yeah, also have to suspend your disbelief. You also have to suspend your disbelief when it's a fucking John Woo film. Yes. Oh, yeah, too. It's a John Woo film, isn't it? There's doves everywhere. Well, yeah. I was going to say, when he fucking comes out of the little bunker prison at the end and there's fucking <laughs> yeah. doves for flying out after him. Mate, I haven't seen that film since, like, 2002. Or oh, the motorbikes <laughs> coming at each other like oh, a joust I, and they attack I, I, each other. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I rewatched that because I was like, I'm, I don't remember that being very good. And I rewatched that and I was like, nah, it's just the slow motion that the, 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 he's spinning wow, on the bike wow. and, he, and he shoots and then they, they, then they drive at each other and then the bike tyres change from road tyres <laughs> to off-road tyres. You can physically see that because they cannot drive... You cannot drive on sand like that in road tyres. No. You would just fall off instantly, especially yeah. at 60 miles an hour. And then they jump off at each other, at which point their bodies would hit and just break into millions of pieces, <laughs> especially when they then fall another 15 feet down to the ground. And keep fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I need to rewatch that. Oh, God. It's funny. Uh, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the feedback. Excellent. Well, that's it then. That is another podcast, another week, another Nexus review week. Lots of things there for you to go off and watch and avoid as well. Um, um, just so you know, oh, no. Candyland. Yes, there is actually. She's actually dropped that in there. I can see it. I didn't know it was there, but it's there. You, you my... don't do that bit until after the socials, though, pal. Okay, right. Well, Biggie's just fucked up my flow then, because I knew that. I knew that Candyland was coming after the socials. Of course I knew that. As always. Of course you knew that. To all our extra- <laughs> <laughs> As always. our show yeah. notes and at modernescapism.co.uk. <laughs> yeah, all that. Ne- next week, it will be a feature episode, and we will let you know very soon what it is. <laughs> next week will be a feature episode. It will be a Patreon pick. This is your pick you get to choose. We'll throw that up Boom. in there later on this week. And we should have... Be getting Ian from Court Connection should be joining us. If that yes. Is. So, He'd give us a promise. Yeah. So we'll have a guest on. And yeah, in the meantime, sign up to Patreon and listen to Kenny Potter because it's brilliant. So listen to Too Far Too Curious because it's brilliant. And everything else that we do on Patreon is brilliant. So if you... Um, <laughs> we're going to listen to Candyland and listen to her deranged <laughs> stuff. No, this is what you say. And now... We're no. going to enter Candyland. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never hosted it into Candyland. I nearly no. said we're going to the green room now, but yeah. No, I almost instantly forgot that it's Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this dear listener, is why I've chosen Stig for this occasion to show you how good I am at hosting. <laughs> While you die yeah, in the corner. Bad. Not that I'm bad. Dying. I just didn't, write, I just, didn't, just didn't write the end down. Yeah. Oh, I don't write nothing down, mate. It's all in here. And now, what's up in Candyland? Bullshit. (laughs) I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do a candy impression as I read this out, but she has submitted. No. Um, But this is this is this is the deranged musings of her hair dice poisoned mind. Um, last June, NASA's Juno spacecraft completed a close flyby of Jupiter and the solar system's <laughs> largest moon, Ganymede. As it flew past, it recorded audio produced by the electric and magnetic uh, radio waves produced by Jupiter's magnetosphere and their interaction with Ganymede. And she's provided a clip of it, so you can have a listen to it here. She then goes on to say, I'm sure you can all agree that's a banger worthy of Skrillex. Audio has also been picked up from Saturn's <laughs> rings. And it made me think. Jesus fucking Christ, Caddy. Do you think our solar system is actually doing some kind of Lunar Vision song contest? <laughs> she needs to grow up. Like, is is this the cheesiest music they can put out, but actually down on the planets, they really don't take the moons' music seriously? 
Does uh. one moon get nil space point every year because the rest of the solar system doesn't really like them? <laughs> I feel like this. our moon would sound like a Blur song. Venus would sound like Lady Gaga. Saturn would sound like Muse. And Uranus would sound like Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> or Oodles. Fucking hell. Oh, She's broken in the head, that woman. <laughs> yeah, she needs putting down. Have you listened to the sound as well? God. There's, there's no, Weird, isn't it? There's no fucking like, musical not, tone or anything in it's that. It's not musical, it's just sound. It's there's like... no mad drop to it, isn't no. there? No. <laughs> I, was wait, I was waiting for it to, for the, uh, to kick in. Wait, wait for the drop. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Candy, you are Unwell. mental. <laughs> A national treasure. <laughs> yeah, that too. Special. Yeah. You, it doesn't, doesn't. There's nothing to discuss there. It's just insanity. It's yeah. pure leave insanity. It. Leave it. Burn just it leave that hanging in the, the show. Leave, leave, leave it for the listeners to then go, th- go throughout their day, sitting there thinking, what does a moon sound like? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> sound well tarly. Just listen Conzi. to some intelligent drum and Bob. bass by LTJ Bob. Bookham. That'll do it. What would what Elon do, Stig? What would Elon do? <laughs> he tried to buy the moon and then uh, <laughs> charge you $8 to go and sit on it. Uh, and with that note, um, we are going to head into the green room. If you are a Patreon, then this is where the podcast ends for you. And we say adieu. For everyone else, we will see you in the green room. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Ridiculous, but I love my anal bait.